name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This Sunday is designated as Catechetical Sunday. It's a day to affirm and to support all those who carry out catechetical ministry in the parish. It's also a day to simply recognize the importance of ongoing catechetics for every member of the church, since God calls us all to continual growth. Also, today's readings remind us that with God we're wise to expect the unexpected. Life is full of surprises, sometimes reversals. We may suffer injustice, things may seem unfair, out of balance, but things happen when we least expect them. But whenever it happens to us, we can be confident that God is with us. Even more, a loving, generous God is actually pursuing us. God's love and compassion are always here, although everything and everyone differently. Nothing as it seems. Lord Jesus, you taught the disciples that God's generosity is not like our own. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you show us that God's love is offered to everyone. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to live with generous, boundless love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You will see at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone, the Holy One, you alone, the Lord, you alone, the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate towards all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him to all who call upon him in truth. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. <clears throat> A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. 
For to me, life is Christ, and death is gain. If I go living, if I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet, that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, You too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon, and around three o'clock, and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give the last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus, the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Mark Twain has once said that everybody talks about the weather, uh, but no one does anything about it. And how can we? We have no control over the weather at all. And people also ask about the religious education of our young people. Where are the young going? What will they be like uh, when they grow up? Now, unlike the weather, uh, we can do something about it. And it's all our responsibility, and it's not easy. It's something that's very difficult. 
Remember several years ago, uh, Pope Benedict XVI, he was uh, interviewed. It was one, I forget what book it was, but they, was talk, they were talking, the question was about religious education. And he said that he didn't really have the answer for it. Uh, in Germany, they were going for religious education sometimes 12, 14 years, but they, they didn't seem to be learning that well at all. And he was, he was stumped by the whole thing. It was a little bit consoling for me. I mean, here he is, Benedict XVI is arguably the best theologian on earth. Um, he didn't have the answer, so it's something that's hard. And parents today uh, do not always know about their faith, and many of them are not going to Mass, so that makes it even harder to be able to catechize their children. And then COVID-19 has just added more problems to the whole, to the whole thing. So today, we are celebrating Catechetical Sunday, and it's something that's very comprehensive. Uh, it includes religious education, also the Catholic schools, very important, RCIA, and the Liturgy of the Word for children, and certainly the other things could actually be included in here. And with the Liturgy of the Word from children, certainly I'm quite pleased with what's the development with that. Mike Brindisi did it a very good job uh, getting that program going. And then last year, I think it was Kathy Mulvaney, picked it up and it continued on to be a good program. So it's a valuable program for us. Now, the religious education program uh, was once called CCD, and it was done, that term was done away with 30 years ago. But we still call it sometimes CCD. Sometimes I even call it CCD. Remember 30 years ago, all the catechists, the, the different uh, parishes, uh, had to go to a meeting with Terry Odin, who ran the religious education program for the diocese, and I was, I was running at that particular time. And um, I remember him saying, he said, we don't call it CCD, we call it religious education now. So I went back and he told my pastor, he said, we're, we're supposed to call it religious education now. And he said, I sent you up there to this meeting, and that's what you come back and tell me? <laughs> It's still CCD. It's CCD. It's not religious. It's CCD. So it's not going to change. All right. So the um, what what is CCD? Uh, there are some good names for it, and there are some that are very negative terms. And I think it's one of the reasons they did away with it. But originally, it was the confraternity of Christian doctrine. Sounds pretty good. We're talking about doctrine. We're talking about the truths of God. You know, so it's something that uh, something I love very much. Sometimes it would be called, not as much, but continuing Catholic education. A good one way of looking at it. All right, there are negative ones. Uh, one that came out, I guess, the, I guess I heard this a few years ago. You probably heard this one. Communion, confirmation, done. You know, not, not very good, not very good. And one that I heard last year, maybe some of you heard, have not heard this one. Uh, Catholic captivity detention. That's not, that's not what we're about with the religious education program. Okay, there's another one. It was an early one. You probably, you probably never heard this one at all. It's not a bad one. Christians care deeply. Christians care deeply. And this is opportunity for us to care deeply, and certainly it's all of our jobs. And the catechists that we have, we have a wonderful group of catechists, very devoted to the church. The Eucharist means a lot. Also very experienced. And they're willing to give their time, so we're going to have them commit themselves again for another year, uh, right after the homily here. All right, so one of their jobs is actually to pass on the deposit of faith to the children. Our Catholic faith is beautiful. There's no question about it. It's one of tremendous, tremendous beauty. Um, some people in the church we know have done horrible things. We have some that sick priest uh, who did horrible things, and they're no longer in the ministry. Tremendous, tremendous beauty in our faith. We've had great teachers through the centuries. We've had great councils, tremendous wisdom, the sacraments we have, our history. And we want to pass that on. It's something fabulous. We want to pass that on uh, to our children. And I love the aspect, the intellectual aspects of the church. You're not going to beat that. You're not going to beat it. And I'm very much in tune with that. Now, the gospel, actually, as we know, means good news. Great news, uh, very consoling news. And the pandemic has made things more difficult. We get more bad news. And you go over to the rectory, you go to, well, what, what bad news am I going to hear today? 
uh, but we get a lot of bad news, and sometimes not directly or indirectly to do with the uh, pandemic. But the word can help us bring sanity to our lives. We derive great pleasure from it, great enjoyment uh, from the word of God. And our faith gives us meaning, it gives us purpose in life. A couple of weeks ago, I was watching EWTN, and they had, I like to watch the mass that they had at the beginning of Catholic University. And usually they talk about St. Thomas Aquinas, which is one of my favorite theologians, but they didn't talk about him this time. It was Bishop uh, Wilton Gregory. Very good. He gave a very good talk. And he's talking about education, but just problems that we're having in the world in general. And he says, beyond our talents, beyond our abilities, we need to depend on the Holy Spirit. We need to call on him. The Holy Spirit has the power to go through locked doors, and he comes to us in full force. And we need him with the problems in the world, and we definitely need him with the religious education program. Yesterday, uh, the gospel was one of the sower in the field, and it was a good gospel. I was, did a little research on that, but uh, the purpose of it was to give us encouragement. And it spoke about the obstacles that we face in life. Birds, stones, and thorns were preventing the word to take root. But they also, the word also fell into generous good hearts and will produce good fruit through perseverance. And certainly our catechists, they have good hearts, generous hearts, and the word has taken root in them, and they also they are able to go and produce good fruits as a result of it. But also, it mentions through perseverance, how important perseverance is. We have to persevere. Sometimes we can get discouraged. Sometimes with the religious education class, there might be eight kids in there and three of them show up one time. We get a little bit discouraged. How come there's only three here? We need to persevere. The prayer is so important. Sometimes just generally in life, sometimes we can get knocked down. Sometimes people can say very cruel things to us and we can get discouraged. But God always picks us up. Usually if I get knocked down and discouraged, if I last for 24 hours, at the very most three days, it is something serious. But usually it's 24 hours and God's picking me up and getting me back to, getting me back to normal. But we need that prayer. We need the prayer of the catechist. We need to keep praying. And we all, whatever we're doing, we need to keep uh, praying. Now the program uh, this year is going to be a little bit smaller for a number of different reasons. We don't have a lot of children in the island to begin with. Uh, but we, the program is going to be smaller. Some have gone on to Assumption School. And uh, they're going to be getting religion every day. Certainly a good thing. We get religion every day. I have religion every day. Uh, so our classes are going to be smaller. And so there will be more individual attention we'll be doing. Like I said, we're going to have one class over, I mentioned this a couple weeks ago, one class over in the back of the rectory. At first I was going to put two back here, maybe one over here, and we're playing around. We might put three back because we want to use the church. Uh, we want to use the church. We can have church for tours. We can explain St. Glass windows, tabernacle, everything here. Uh, so the, uh, we might have three back there, and it's a, it's a big hall. We'll be able to spread them out, and we'll have all you know, mask and separation. There'll be uh, also, they'll have a temperature check before they come in. Uh, so this is going to be something good. I'm very, very much looking forward to it, and I think it's going to be a very good program. For a catechist, uh, we're going to have a meeting Thursday night. Uh, Thursday night, we'll have it back in, the, uh, back in the rectory just to go over some things because it's going to be a little bit different, how the kids are going to come in, and all that. And we encourage also, uh, the sign-ups are coming, but they're coming slowly. Uh, so um, now we're live streamed here, so I'm talking more than, than just to, to 100 people or so here. All right, so what it would be, uh, come into the rectory during the week and then go and you'll be able to sign up uh, for the program. We still have, have to know the number for to get for the books and, and, and everything else. So that's, that's very important to be able to go and just be have that uh, sign up. So if you know people haven't signed up, go and spread the word uh, to them. Our religious education program, top priority. It has always been the top priority. It's very, very important for all of us to actually pass our faith on to our, well, on to our children. So what we're going to do now, uh, I'm going to, um, let me have a little prayer first here.
and that will have the right of commissioning. God our Father has given our parish a very great gift. This gift is good news which was embodied in his son Jesus. We share the responsibility of ministering to others in this parish by extending the good news of the gospel, the good news of our Catholic faith. Some of the members of our parish have responded in a special way to welcome the Lord through their involvement in the catechetical ministry, the teaching of our beautiful faith. We now call them forth and give them a commission to be catechetical ministers of the Word of God expressed through our Catholic Christian faith, founded by Christ, by, uh, by Christ himself. So well, at this time I want to ask all the catechists, all those involved with the RCI program, to come up here and Jennifer is now <laughs> going to be able to move through that. Now, I think we, Ed, did you have one? My brothers and sisters, Jesus said to his disciples, go out into the whole world and preach the gospel to all nations. Will you continue to grow as disciples of the Lord by making every effort to hear the word of God, integrate the teachings of Christ and his holy Catholic Church into our lives, and share your faith with others? I will. You have been called to become teachers of our faith among the children of our parish. Do you promise to welcome Christ in your midst by bringing the word of God to our parish family through prayer, teaching, service, and examples? I do. Loving God, source of all wisdom and knowledge, bless these and all the catechists with a generous sharing in your spirit. We ask you to bless them as they go forward in your names and with our support to continue drawing on your wisdom and continue the mission of Jesus among us. Bless the work and make it fruitful. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And one thing we really want to thank our catechists. Okay, that's it. You can go back to your views now. <laughs> Please stand and we'll have our creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son, for the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray now, brothers and sisters, for our own needs and those of one another. And the response is, Lord, hear our prayer.
for the whole church, that we be ever mindful that we all need God's mercy, that all the baptized be quick to forgive and seek reconciliation for the ability to rejoice when mercy is shown toward those we resent or fear, we pray. Lord, for groups and organizations whose missions promote mercy and exoneration over revenge and punishment, for a national attitude of mercy when our cultural and political rhetoric promote retribution, for the safety of our peacekeeping troops and first responders, we pray. Lord, for families who need to be forgiving towards one another and for parents struggling to teach mercy, for all who are suffering and marginalized, especially those who have never experienced mercy, for the, an end to racism, we pray. Lord, for help to strengthen and multiply those called to catechetical ministry and show us how to support and encourage their work. Give us a sense of urgency and passion as we proclaim the Holy Gospel. May the catechists be blessed with creativity and enthusiasm and stewards of God's gifts, we pray. Lord, Lord. For those who have been affected by the ravages of hurricanes and wildfires, that victims of natural disaster, earthquakes, drought, heat, or cold, receive the help they need to rebuild their lives. For the eradication of the coronavirus, we pray. Lord, Lord. For the sick, the dying, and for those who have died, especially Edward Moen and Pat Porter, who are being remembered during this Mass. And please remember the souls of Tom Park and Edward Burke III, who died recently, we pray. Lord, Lord. Loving God, bless all our families, families and help them to lead the children to you. Give them wisdom and strength when they face difficulties. Fill their homes with joy. Help us to reach out to them in love and concern. Embrace them fully in our parish community. Accept this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our announcements are as follows. <clears throat> St. Thomas will be having a flu clinic on Wednesday, September 30th, immediately following the 8.30 a.m. Mass until 12.30 p.m. Please line up at the outside door to St. Phil Paul in the church parking lot and stay distant until you are called in by the Walgreens staff. Mask must be worn. Do not enter St. Philip's Hall from the church. Only flu shots will be given. There's a note here that says senior dose. I hope that means that they will have the senior dose available.
pray, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that when they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere is to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, through your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. by sending them your spirit upon like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partake in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Dennis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always, free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For Jesus Christ said, Apostle, peace I leave in my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously raise us up, O Lord, those you renew with the sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and the manner of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Amen. And the Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.